Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness that you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first confess, consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, and his merciful Father, and holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive our sins and the Grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The intro for today we read responsibly, The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known all the peoples, to all the peoples your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are failing, falling, and raises up all those who have bowed down. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, your mercy attends all our days. Be our strength and support amidst the wearisome changes of this world. And at life's end, grant us your promised rest and the full joys of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson for today comes from the Old Testament prophet Zechariah, chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He shall cut off, from Eph shall cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off. And his command, he shall command peace to all nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, blessed are you because of the blood of my covenant with you. I, set your, I will set your prisoners free from all the waterless pits. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will resolve, restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the second lesson, from Romans, the second lesson from Paul's letter, chapter 7. And... Uh, I found this very comforting when I was a student in school to see that somebody else had the same problem as I did. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do, not do what I want, but I do the very thing that I hate. 
Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do, do it, but the sin that dwells in me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good that I want, but the evil that I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but the sin that dwells in me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do good, want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God, in, in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will say, rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with my mind I am a slave to the law of God, but with my flesh I am a slave to the law of sin. This is the word of God, the Lord. Thanks be to God. We give recognition to the Holy Gospel, which comes from the Gospel of St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus says, But to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, but they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to the infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son has chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. I will take my yoke upon you, and you will learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls." For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We begin together as we say, our, say the words of our faith and according to the Apostles' Creed, as we say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He was descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing together our next hymn, number 725.
Do we have any children that are present this morning? We got a few. Okay, good. That's good. Well, the song we just sang is a very special song because it talks to us as God's children. You are children who, um, who have your parents to rely on. That's the way God intended it, that as children, when something is wrong, what we do is we run to mommy or daddy. And that's what God uh, encourages us to do each day. Just like a child like you, we run to our father, our mother and father, our, our father in heaven. Our mother and fathers may be gone, but we have the heavenly father who loves us and cares for each day. And I bet when you run to your mom or your dad and you're one of those smaller ones, maybe two or three years of age, and when you run to mom and dad, what you want is to be hugged and, and caressed, and you want to be having your, um, your favorite thing, either, either uh, like one of our grandsons uses Stanley, which is a, um, a penguin, I think, and uh, he has, he has, in fact, Stanley has multiplied. He had, there's four of him. But uh, Stanley is his comfort. Stanley is his, like his blankie. And so the, when we are older too, we need to be comforted by God in the midst of hardships and difficult times. And we need to have that loving thing that we can hold on to. And that which is our blankie, which covers us, which surrounds us, is the very word of God that is with us always. Never are we without that word, for we have it committed in our hearts and minds. And so as children, we rejoice when we can jump into mom and daddy's arms or when we can jump into the arms of our Savior through prayer. Let's have a quick word of prayer. Dear Lord, bless all these children those who are young of age and still are troubled by the world. And bless your older children, Lord, who are troubled by the world in which they live. Give us your love and your grace and never leave us or forsake us. And keep us always in your loving care and purpose. Preserve us with our faith in Christ Jesus our Lord and help us to listen to others who are in need of your word. Amen. In that same vein of going to God, we have an invitation today. We have an invitation that calls us to be in the arms of Jesus. Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest, says Jesus in the gospel lesson for today. I will give you rest. I'm not sure what's going on in your household, but I am perpetually tired these days. It is just, it's so much the, the burden, I think, of our minds racing with major events. The, uh, the COVID-19 problem that is surrounding the world. <clears throat> I was still thinking this morning when I, when I got up, I woke up about 5.15. And I thought, how can it be that one small virus that is so minuscule, so that there's, there's so many things that come about because of this small virus and separates us from one another because of sickness. And I, I found that I was, I was outside work or watching a couple workmen yesterday in our backyard cleaning up some, uh, some tree things that uh, needed to be trimmed. And I made sure I stayed back far enough from them and, you know, social distance plus times two just to be sure, because they didn't have a mask on. And when I'm weary, I need to have someone to run to and to comfort me. And so the words of Jesus in the gospel lesson are a wonderful come on for us. Not only the COVID, it's the whole, the whole racial issue that's going on in our country that seems to wear us down. And the hardships that come upon people as we watch different things happen on TV. We hear reports of police officers wounded and we hear reports of, of prisoners being taken that uh, are very much harmed and damaged. And so we struggle with all these things. And in the midst of this, God comes to us and he says, all you who are weary, 
All you are heavy laden, come and lay your burden down. Come and lay that down for the sake of, of your well-being. And so God gives us that opportunity today and always. And not only does he give that to us, but he gives it through us to others. He gives it through us that they might hear and learn and understand that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There are, um, there are a number of things that happened during the course of this last week. Last week, before, just before the beginning of this past, past week, I had received the, uh, the reporter from the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. I think I might have just mentioned this barely yesterday or last Sunday. Seems like yesterday. That, um, that the reporter had in it or on it the, the bold headline of racism in the church, a time to listen. And so we have this opportunity as God gives this, this chance to others to come through us to those who are around us and that we might invest ourselves in them like Christ has invested himself in us. Paul says it all when he talks about the, uh, the struggle that goes on within us as we think about how we are tempted to sin. The evil I don't want to do, that's what I do. And the good I want to do, that's what I, I don't do, Paul says. The words can get confusing, but the meaning is very clear. There's sin that reign, remains within us. And we need to cleanse ourselves and we need to let Christ himself be that which pulls us out of these pits, these dark pits. Like Psalm 30, 130 says, Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my prayer and be attentive to the voice of my supplication. And so we have this invitation. And God wants to make that invitation available to those who are around us. God calls us into his ways and into his words of, with repentance so that we might be strong and, and blessed in him. St. Paul uses some of the same words as he says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. Bear one another's burdens, and thus you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those, that, that's, that's all. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. And so God gives us this opportunity to lay the, lay the things that are harmful to us, that, that break us down and bring us into his presence and comfort and calm us. That comfort, that calming effect comes from not just words, but what God has actively done as he has received us into his kingdom as we are baptized into Jesus Christ as, as his members. As we are coming to the the very, or the very time of our, our own facing of, of death and hardships and things, God even gives even more comfort and more realization that while this world is, is where we have had our being, that he wants us to be with him in another place, in another time. And so calls us into this re, re, restful kind of a response to all the things that crowd us in the world. And once he does that, he raises us up fills us with strength and gives us the, the blessing that we can now be a blessing to others. I'd like to share with you a few thoughts about what that article said from, uh, from the um, reporter. I had to think where I had it laying. This is a note that comes, there's, there's 10 people that are interviewed. And this is a note from Kay Wolf, W-O-L-F-F, -F, from Emanuel Lutheran Church in Dearborn, Michigan. I have more tears than I have words now, tears and prayers. I think some of this is letting out the feelings that have held people for so long. Now it's time to go ahead and speak it. 
I experienced it. I'm, mar I'm married to a white German Lutheran pastor. I have gone with him to places where people didn't know that we were husband and wife. I got treated in one way and he got treated in another way. And when they found out that I was there with him and I was his wife, they tripped all over themselves to be kind to me. You don't always have to get rid of their, go out there and protest. I haven't been out on the protest line yet. I have been at home praying and studying and preparing for the next wave. I always look at James 1.19, be slow to speak. And I still, I am still in prayer. I am reading and learning so that when I do speak, I can educate people firsthand based on my experience, cultural experience, history, and the gospel. We have got to show mercy. We have got to understand. We have got to forgive. Oh, my goodness, we all have a lot of forgiving to do when all, all the shouting is over. A woman of color married to a German Lutheran pastor who once they realized that she was the pastor's wife, they couldn't do enough for her before they had shunned her. I remember a case that I, when I was serving in a congregation in Portage, Indiana, which is on the southeast edge of the Chicago metropolitan area, and a lady of color, a, or an African-American woman, came into the, into the church and worship with us. And this was an all-white congregation. And it was, it was very disheartening to see people looking at each other and speaking behind their bulletins and looking at her and no one going up and greeting her. And she never came back. She never gave us the opportunity to, to love her and to share with her her life, to share in her hardships and difficulties. For it was evident that she had a very difficult life happening. But we don't have to be that way. We re rejoice that God has made us brothers and sisters. Paul said there's neither male nor free, female, neither slave nor free, neither Jew nor Greek, but all are one in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so we have this opportunity to share the love of Christ. As we do that, we remember that judgment does not help. There's a word that um, my wife and I heard on, uh, in, in, in a television show. It came from, uh, from uh, Sister Teresa. If you judge people, you have no time to love them. If you judge people, you have no time to love them. Because the judgment gets in the way of listening, and the listening with the, with the judgment attached pulls apart the love that we have to share. It's time to listen, as the reporter newspaper said. It's time for us to be open and to invest ourselves. Bear one another burdens in the way that you will, in this way, fulfill the law of Christ. The burdens that weigh us down, the burdens of seeing racial injustice the burdens of losing loved ones, both police and, and public, bear each other's burdens so that God might live in and through us in this broken nation. Believe, bear one another burdens, not about the story of a family, or read about the story in this reporter of another family there that lived within four miles of where uh, George Floyd was murdered and what happened that during the nights there was riots but during the daytime during the daytime people of the community black, white, Asian all came together to clean up the riotous mess that took place in Minneapolis to work to restore stores and to allow them to come back into business and so we have a question sometimes Question, can we forgive and let go of the things even though there's hardships? Could you forgive like one black, young black man was doing, forgiving the, the police officer who under, came into her wrong apartment on the wrong floor and accidentally shot a young man who was in his own apartment? 
when he was when that police officer was tried and convicted the young man who was the brother of the gentleman who was shot came and asked the judge can i give her a hug can i express to her a a, a moment of forgiveness and they were able to do that the strength of god at work in the church even in the midst of hardship and difficulties and so i call on you to rejoice in what god has done and what he gives us this opportunity to bring our burdens and to lay them down that's what i invite you to do here today to lay your burdens down at the foot of the cross to lay your burdens down so that you don't carry them so they don't weigh weight you down and to remember that what Jesus has said, my burden is light and my yoke is easy because in him he walks with us and he helps us each and every step of the way. Remember what Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. And what I have done to you, he says, do to others. And that evening before he died upon the cross John's gospel tells us how Jesus instructs the disciples love one another even as I have loved you so that others might know that love and care so they might find the rest and resources the only way we're going to be able to take advantage of this great opportunity that faces our nation right now is to be loving and forgiving listening and caring and I'm not sure where you'll do that but God will give you opportunities if you only look to find them, if you're only open to receive them. God's love is there for all people. God's love is there so that others might have the blessings that you and I have received also. Yes, bear, bear one another's burdens in the church, out of the church, and everywhere we walk. This, this prime opportunity that is before us as a nation, when the mass of people are saying enough with racial divisions, enough with, with condemning one another, it's now time to work together in love and to bring together the blessing of Christ to a broken world. Without that, anything else will only be temporary. But the restoration of our lives in Christ Jesus and the relationships with others is what calls us into this being at this place at this time. It's Christ Jesus, our Lord, who shares this with us. And so he calls us as children of the Heavenly Father, and he gives us this opportunity to serve. How to serve? That's going to be up to you. But I'll give you some examples of things that, that uh, I try to do. One of them is when I get the opportunity to hold the door open for a group of people, I do that, no matter what color. I stand back and hold it open. Let them know and be, go first. Say, please, go ahead. Give them that opportunity to let them know that they are important to you and to the community, especially with people of color, and give them the opportunity. Give them the opportunity to to help in their communities when there are such things as the cleanup that was talked about in Minneapolis where the riots had taken place after George Floyd's death. And so God calls us, calls us to cherish the opportunities and the people that we can encounter. He calls us to be a blessing to those who are around us not judging, not harassing, but knowing that God is about in us. He is about the world. We are the hands of Christ. We are the feet of Christ. And we share that love with all who are broken. And we call forward the love of Christ that will bind us together and give us some hope for the future. Bear one another's burdens. For in sharing this burden and carrying it, the grief is reduced to know that someone else's son or daughter has died. And our grief is, their grief is reduced as we 
we extend to them the love and care in Christ Jesus our Lord. Bear one another's burdens in all, and so fulfill the law of Christ's love. Love one another even as I have loved you. A moment for you to pray. Lord Jesus, we pray for the sick, the hungry, the families that are broken, for those who have lost loved ones. We pray that you would institute within us or give to us the power of your Holy Spirit that we might fulfill the commandment to love each other even as you have loved us. Give us the power to hear and to listen, to identify and empathize with the pain, the suffering and the hardship of those who are oppressed. And give us the opportunity to reach out. Bless us with a world where young children are judged not by the color of their skin, as Martin Luther King said, but by the content of their character. And let us work for faith and love among all peoples. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Thank you. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, for you have had mercy upon us in your only begotten Son, and that's what whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit. You justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by the second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for your redemption that you have prepared for us through Christ Jesus. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink the fruits of the cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Receive our prayers, O Lord, on behalf of those who are ill and suffering at this time, especially those who fight the COVID virus, keep them safe and healthy. And also, Lord, we pray that you would be with those who are hospitalized, who are on ventilators. Help us to trust our leadership in medical, medical things and help us to respond to the message of, of, co of social distancing of mask that seems to be the only way to fight this thing until we get a, a vaccine that will help. Lord, give us your strength to listen to those who mourn and who are oppressed and help us speak the words of, of your wisdom and your love and grant to us the blessing that in being you in the world that we might be strengthened in our faith and always have peace and love. All these things we ask, Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus. We also ask you to pray for, to, to receive the prayers that we say in our hearts and minds now for those beyond us who are sick. For those who are in leadership. for those who have been injured. Give courage to all to live forward in your name, to live out in the world. Grant to us your salvation, the wholeness. Restore to us the joy of salvation. Restore to us the blessings of being in this world as your people as long as you would have us here and give us the road to walk, the call to faith, the energy and courage to act in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. In his name we pray, our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from the dead your, the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of the shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. As you go forth into the world, you carry the hands of Christ. As you travel down your walkways of the day, you walk with the feet of Christ. Your ears are the ears of Christ to hear the hurts, the pain, the sorrows, and the suffering. Your mouth and your tongue, the tongue and mouth of Christ, that you might share the good news and send out the blessing and call people to lay their burdens down. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Eternal Father, strong to save.
Is that on? It should be. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Bell. I am the vice chair of the Trans Transition Task Force. I am coming before you this morning because, as you know, we have been meeting as a group for a while. We have come to the point in the process where we want and need to hear from you. I'm going to take a few minutes to address a few questions about the cottage meeting process. First, what are they? Cottage meetings are interactive small group discussions on one topic that the TTF group is evaluating. The purpose of these cottage meetings is for the TTF members to gather information from the members on specific topic areas so they can compile a report to the congregation. When are they starting? The first series of the cottage meetings will be starting the end of July. What is the format of them? We will be offering three different kinds in order to make sure everyone has an option based on their safety preference. An in-person gathering, an outdoor option, and a virtual gathering online. We will be giving you more details as we know them, but please know we are aware that these cottage meetings are occurring during the middle of a pandemic and that plans might need to change based on our current public health situation. We will keep you updated and communicate about the cottage meetings in the bulletin, by email, the monthly newsletter, and with church announcements. What are the topics of these cottage meetings? The TTF team was split into three groups to focus on three topic areas. The first group, the one starting at the end of July, will focus on mission and vision. The second group, who will run their cottage meetings in August, will focus on doctrine and practice. The third group will run their meetings in September and focus on leadership and governance. Each group will have a series of three cottage meetings and will explore a research question within their topic area. Scott Sponholtz, who is the TTF chair, did a great job of summarizing the TTF groups in the newsletter that just went out. So please refer to that for more information. And finally, why are these cottage meetings important? The TTF process and the cottage meetings in particular involves the future of our church. We want everyone to participate and share their ideas. This is an important step in the call process and we appreciate your willingness to participate. Please feel free to reach out to any member of the TTF group at any time with questions you have. Thank you.